Welcome back, friends. Today, I'm down in Milwaukee with a music artist that I found on Instagram quite a while ago, and we've been hoping to make it happen, but I didn't want to drive all the way down here until I had a bunch of shit to do, which I finally did. <laughs> and they welcomed me into this awesome radio studio, which I'll let him explain. So welcome to the show, Wave Chappelle. Yo, what's up, my man? I'm, how Dude. you feeling? I'm feeling really good. Yeah, welcome to Milwaukee, bro. Dude, <laughs> yeah, Milwaukee's gnarly, dude. Like, I'm used to yeah. Minneapolis if I go to a big city, which is, like, the safest big city in the world. Mm -hmm, I feel like mm -hmm. Milwaukee's a little bit more raw. Yeah, man, no, it's definitely... It's, it's you know, it's the city vibes, bro. It has yeah. very much city vibes, you know yeah. what I mean? You got the... The busy areas, you have the homes, the houses, all that good stuff. Yeah. And uh, just to be very on point, it's raining for you. <laughs> Dude, that was the worst part because the last hour of the drive, I couldn't see anything yeah. because there's, you know, four lanes and it's all just like semi trucks spitting in my face. Yeah. But either way. I made it, and you hopefully it, I can make it home. So exactly. you're, you're from here, right? Yeah, bro, born and raised. I grew up on the north side, uh, 32nd and Villard. Um, I spent, actually, I, I moved around a lot, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I spent a lot of my uh, memorable years, you know, 32nd and Villard up to like where McGuff Park is. Right, because you yeah. started doing music back in high school and stuff. What, did you start middle school, high school? It was young, So right? I started eighth grade. I started like recording my voice like eighth grade, and then all through high school, I was like taking it very serious. You're you just know? recording with a laptop? Top? How are you doing that? Yeah, yeah. So we had the crib set up. We had the MacBook. We had the mic. You know what I mean? We had the Scarlet interface. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and yeah, man, we were just cranking out joints. You know what I mean? We was just learning. Really learn. I was learning my voice, uh, learning how I sound on a, on a record. You know what I mean? Learning how important mixing is, how important a good mic is. Like all the... You know, just all of the small things, all the uh, trials and error I learned all through high school. Yeah. Did you have like a whole crew of people that you guys all kind of did shows and y stuff with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in a group called Be Right. And it was really, um, it was actually a lot of my big homies, like my, my older homies, that was their group. And then uh, my big cousin, Seven, he was also in the group. And he was like, yo, my little cousin, nice. Like he nice, <laughs> like bro, like y'all got to have him in a group. Yeah. And um, again, he brought me through to the crew And I rapped, I'll never forget I started freestyling, I was freestyling in the basement They was like, oh, he in, we need him, yeah How old were you at that point? Maybe like, maybe like 15 maybe Oh, like shit Yeah, maybe like 15, 16 Sure And then from there on, bro, we were like Again, uh, the group was called Be Right And we started to do shows all through Milwaukee We ran all through Miramar my, Like Mad Planet down the street And um, and then we won a bunch of like Shepherd Express Awards Okay. That was like, as far as the group, that was like our crescendo Right what there. are those awards? I'm not familiar. Uh, the Shepherd Express Award is just like a best in the city. Oh, best, cool. Best of in the city. Yeah. Um, and so I know two years in a row we won best rap group and then we won best online presence because we was like, man, we was so cold on. And this is before. I mean, this is like right around when Instagram became a thing. Right. And uh, Tumblr was still a thing. Yeah. So we were so cold with, like, blogging, taking photos, curating our aesthetic, like, all of that. Nobody was really on it. They was, but, like, we was, like, mastering it. Yeah. Um, and I think we were just so young and it all hit at the same time right and um so yeah that was like my high school tenure i think that's like the beautiful thing nowadays though is like people think they need a label or whatever mm -hmm. but really if you want to be successful you need to stay up on top of i don't i don't want to say just like trends but like yeah. the way that things are evolving what other opportunities right like yeah. when new apps come out or whatever yeah. or when there's new features on apps all that type of stuff yeah because when you're small you're just yourself you mm -hmm. can pounce on that stuff immediately before yeah. anybody else is doing it yeah and that's when you can really blow up versus is like some of these bigger organizations honestly the people they have in charge of marketing and everything i don't want to call them has-beens but like when they got that job and when they started working in that industry it was a different industry yeah and now it's evolving so fast that's why you can see random kids out of nowhere just like blow up without any backing yeah it's so innovative now you know yeah. what i mean everybody's learning the power of um social media and right. in in that is so much independence you know what i mean like i told this one kid i'm like he said he wants to be an artist i'm like yo you can literally wake up just buy get here's the equipment you could be that you could be whatever you want to be in your bedroom for real for real yeah you know what i mean because you you got, you got the streamers. All you do is, you know, set the camera up on the MacBook and you could just blow up from your house. You Dude, know what I mean? there's literally zero excuses to me. Like you could easily just put on any beat from your laptop, yeah. throw Audacity on, which is a free program, yeah. and then 
like record freestyles with your phone exactly. and you could blow up that way if they're good like yep. people recognize it's not like album quality but yeah. it would work for social media exactly because then that's also that's your channel you know what i mean yeah. like instagram social media in general is your commercial this is where right. you advertise yourself so you don't need a you don't need a, a marketing budget you yeah. know what i mean because instagram and all that is free yeah uh you recorded you recorded the product in the crib you can create your brand in the crib so just to piggyback off what you're saying man it's all possible it's yeah doable. dude yeah everything's possible so but let's going back so you were in high school you rapped a lot here i know you've told the story before yeah but right after school you moved down to memphis yep. and that's when you got really locked in with uh yo Gotti and some other people yeah um i never understood like listening to other interviews obviously mm. you like lived a crazy lifestyle during that got to experience a lot of things yeah what why did that fall apart what was the actual story behind why you no longer were affiliated with them directly i'm sure you yeah. still have good relationships oh but. yeah for sure uh really there's, it's a two-part answer i think on a personal level i was so young experiencing all those things yeah i was like 19 20 years old when i signed my deal and um you know, just experiencing all this stuff. And I was also by myself for the first time in a long time. Like I grew up in a pack of, I, I say it like a pack of wolves, like yeah. my cousins and my, my, all my older friends, I was always in a group. So this time I'm a solo, I'm solo for right. the first time ever. Now I got a deal. Now I'm traveling all over and I'm experiencing all these things. I was just like, I was kind of going a little crazy uh, mentally. You know what I mean? I was yeah. like, yo, this is kind of crazy. Um, so I think there was a little bit of that. It weighed on me heavy, and I just had to press the pause button so I didn't crash out. Yeah. Um, so that's one. But then also, uh, I'll never forget, man, the last uh, the last tour that I was on, and the, the not Gotti himself, but I would say the, the father label, which was Epic Records, yeah. they didn't understand what to do with me. They didn't really know how to market me or brand me, even okay. though I was telling them. Yeah. But you know how it is. They right, got to, yeah. somebody in the building got to fully believe it to let go of that budget, mm -hmm. right? And um, I'll never forget, they put me on tour with Currency. And, uh, you know, everybody knows that Currency is like Mr. Independent. Like, he is the the blueprint for an independent artist. Right. And so he gave me all this game on tour, the whole tour. Like, he's just giving me game. Like, yo, this is how you do it as an independent artist. Man, after that tour, I was like, yo, I'm going to try my hand at this independent thing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it sounds like it's possible. It sounds doable. It looks, I see it. I'm, like, watching it. I'm getting an everyday glimpse of what it looks like. And so, um... Yeah, right after that tour, and I had dropped my album only the beginning. After that, I was just like, "All right, cool. I'm a. I appreciate everything that I learned, and I'm a. You know, try to apply all those things to uh, independent hustle." When you decided to go that route, mm -hmm. what is one of the bigger things that you didn't realize was going to be a challenge? Something that you underestimated as far as being a challenge going independent? Because when you're yeah. in that situation, obviously you think you know everything yeah. until you realize you don't know everything, right? Yeah. I think the biggest challenge was just the perception, um, yeah. like the public perception of right. it. You know, because I look at it like basketball players, right? Like you, you sign a contract to a team, you play that contract out, and now you're a free agent, and now you move around. So we're used to seeing that. But we're artists you don't really know what it's like behind the scenes. You don't know when a, a artist contract is up or when they drop their last album on this label, whatever. People just people just perceive, oh, y'all fell out or, oh, you got dropped or, oh, you fell off, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So I think for me, that was the biggest challenge. You know what I mean? But um, I like to say that I was able to uh, attack that challenge head on and yeah. I, I, I conquered it. But that was definitely something that I didn't um, prepare for. I didn't prepare myself for... That whole fan, the fan, a lot of the fan base that I had, it just totally kind of flipped. It was like, oh, you must have got dropped or something. It was like the the clickbait, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Type vibe. So um, yeah. there was a bit of that, but everything else I totally expected. I understand that when you become an independent, everything is on you. Everything you have to invest. You got to put your own money up. Sometimes you're not even gonna break even on a lot of stuff. Most but, of the time, um, <laughs> you gotta be. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. you gotta be built for it. So that was um something that I made sure I knew when I was going into What was the first experience after that? Was that you put out like an album and everything and how did that kind of work? What what was the project? Man, the, my favorite, probably, I would say my number two favorite project in my whole catalog is called W. And um, man, it was literally the most make or break moment I've ever had in my life. You know what I mean? Uh, it was literally like now I have to put up or shut up. I have to make this really, really great music. And, um, I made it happen because I, I moved back to Milwaukee. I locked in with literally my friends. You know what I mean? The friends that I grew up with, a lot of talented artists, producers. Um, shout out my guy, Ross. He let me use his house. Oh, um, he let me use his house to record 
because he just believed in the vision, you know what I mean? And he was right. like, yo, like you, you could use the basement and turn it into a studio. And um, everybody just can't, would come to the studio and we worked and worked and worked on this album. And when I dropped W, it did so well because I had a single called Overtime. And it was my first time doing like a million streams on like uh, the streaming platforms. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then I ended up getting on like ESPN, MTV, like all these sync, sync deal situations. And um, yeah, man, that was like the redemption. That was the redemption for me right there. It showed that you could actually do it on your own and you didn't necessarily need anybody. Absolutely. So how come you're living back here now? Obviously, like we're skipping over a million yeah, things. Because yeah, again, you kind of talked about your life story before. Yeah. But the last interview that I listened to, you were down in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of cool things about Atlanta. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But whenever you're away, like there's something special about where you're from yeah, there's so much like absolutely. love and roots and everything to it and even like the venues like you have better relationships with them and it means more to you in that kind of way there's just something about it man i live in the same town that i grew up in for yeah. a reason i love eau claire it's a dope city and yeah. i like i'll always be there well we'll see i'll be yeah. there for a long time <laughs> but how come you decided to come back here because it is a limited amount of opportunities to a certain degree for yeah. music out of here yeah I think it was just simply it was just time, man. I think I spent a lot of years outside of Milwaukee um, growing as an artist, gaining knowledge, gaining resources, doing just like really cool things. You know what I mean? Festivals, all this type of stuff. And I felt like um, it was just time for me to come back home and just really be of service to my city. You know what I mean? Because I really do. I love my city so much and I know that it has so much potential to grow. And it has grown, you know what I mean? But I, And I want to be a part of that renaissance, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, when I moved back, I wanted to tap into the community and um, make sure that I'm on every radio station, all the podcasts. If there is a clothing line that I, I can support, I want to support that. All the new artists that are trying to pr make this a career, I want to be able to give all my advice and all the knowledge that I know and, like, pass it along. Yeah. And um, I felt like my ability to do that was very limited in other places but now that i'm here people can see me uh when i walk the streets people walk up to me and be like yo wave like we you know you dope bro we appreciate you and um i think it's dope it's just important to have that representation and to see it and know that it's tangible so yeah um i just felt like it was time on top of having my son you know yeah I mean? shout out to my son yeah. <laughs> yeah i think it's hard to build a really core fan base mm -hmm. if you're not in any individual place right yeah. you get a lot more like casual fans casual listeners but yep. when you have a presence in your hometown and you're a part of community things yeah you can build a really really strong core core fan base yeah and then from there you can still go on tours and you can do all kinds of stuff but especially yeah. like people always want to move to the big cities but there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with being a big fish in a small pond like yeah. people say that as if it's a bad thing but yeah. it's not a bad thing to have a big position in your in your city absolutely because you definitely have to you know you have to i heard this saying a lot too like you have to dominate in one area in order to go and then try your hand in other areas. It's almost like Grand Theft Auto. Uh, I talk in analogies. Sure. It's like uh, it's like Grand Theft Auto. You know, like have, you have to complete all the missions in one map, in one like area of the map. Right. And then the other map lights up. The, er, the, the other area lights up and then you can travel over there. So it's all, that's pretty much how it is. You got to like dominate in one area or not dominate, but you have I to understand. like, yeah. you know, do establish your, yourself. Yeah, establish yourself in one area and then travel you know what i mean and then go try your hand in all these other places um so it's super important and that's something that me i want to shout out my guy kyle that's something that me and him definitely did um when i moved back me and my guy kyle man i told him i'm like yo i want to do the smallest i want to almost act like i'm a brand new artist we're going to do the smallest shows the smallest venues and then we're going to build up you know what i mean and that's what we did man we just knocked them all out we were doing i was doing open mics you sure. know what I mean? And then we went to Cactus Club, and then we did the Cooperage, and then we did Summerfest, and then, you know, then the Bucks Arena. So you just move up, move up, move up. And right. so, um, yeah, man, it was just something that I wanted to do, wanted to make sure that we did. And you know. I think people just have this weird idea, like, you're not going to be too big for Milwaukee. Milwaukee's a big city. Yeah. I mean, maybe it seems like people think that the music scene, there's like a ceiling yeah there isn't really a ceiling nah. you can live anywhere dude look at boney Vera in eau claire he's in eau claire and dude's an a-list <laughs> celebrity making albums with taylor swift so yeah. if you ever if anyone ever thinks like oh i'm i'm outgrown this city yeah you're that's not that's true a, yeah that's you're, a bad mentality right you're really limiting what you think this city is capable of mm -hmm. like you got to change your whole thought process on all of that yep. like the city has potential not only that one person can drastically change the entire culture of a music scene too 100%. right like we 
yeah. have that happening with uh, like the comedy scene mm -hmm. in Eau Claire, mm -hmm. where Colin Ryan, the station manager of uh, of Converge Radio, but he also does like booking for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Dude, he's bringing in all these huge comedians who have done like like Sam Town. I interviewed. He was on Joe Rogan. Crazy. Like these people who are like huge in stand-up comedy playing at ti this tiny little place called the plus in eau claire Word. because one dude is building that whole culture around it yeah. like if you don't think there's enough opportunities in your city and especially if it's a big one like this make the opportunities absolutely th it's there the population's there to support it if you think oh we don't have enough big shows yep. throw a big fucking show dude like nah. you could definitely do that there's yeah. no reason you can't look at soundset and how big that used to be Crazy. minneapolis you're gonna think it's not big enough well they have soundset <laughs> or they used to and then look yeah. at the kind of names that come through yeah. like people are just limiting themselves anybody who hasn't listened to the album which honestly a lot of people don't listen to full albums that's a rarity but i yeah. highly recommend just sit there and listen to the whole damn thing yeah. it's fucking dope man yeah, and then it. add a bunch of them to your liked playlist Absolutely. or you know what i mean just go add them to other people's playlists for that matter like get this man streams <laughs> up like there's Run so many up. ways that people can help out with that type of stuff without yeah. spending money Bro. like i remember interviewing somebody a long time ago and they basically said something along the lines of like if you didn't put money in my pocket don't say you helped dude i totally disagree love yeah. that dude he's rad yeah. but like there are so many things that people can do that can make a huge difference and adding people's songs to playlists mm -hmm. is like the biggest hack in the world yeah. that can like drastically improve that yeah. and like the number of streams you have on things that's how you can justify and get paid and mm -hmm. get hired and get set up for like different shows with venues and all that type of shit yeah so like Go do that for your favorite artist. You're already doing it for Kanye, and he doesn't care about you. Say do it for that, the other man. artist. Say that, man. I have a gift for you, man. Oh, so, man. Do you like coffee? I love coffee, bro. Good. But I doubt you've ever had coffee from Honduras. I have not. So this is Minimum Wage <laughs> Tim's. Uh, Tim went to school in Eau Claire, and he yeah. plays music in Minneapolis. Oh, That's man. for you. Yes. So yes. you get that coffee. Hopefully you enjoy it. And then somebody <laughs> listening gets a free bag of coffee, too. So oh, we're giving cool. away a bag every week. Uh, all you have to do is follow Minimum Wage Tim on Instagram and then DM him the password for the week, which is making waves. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah. So do DM that. him Tap making in. waves. Tap and then in. Yeah. You get that. Yeah. Dude. This is good. I'm going to definitely, I'm going to drink this for real because like, listen, having a kid, bro, you got to have a coffee. You know what I mean? Coffee is important. You got to stay up. I drink a <laughs> pot of coffee literally every single day. It's yeah. not a good thing. Hey, so you spent a lot of time with Yogati as well as Young Dolph, right? Yes. yes. What is your favorite story from each of them? Just like yeah. a personal moment hanging out with them. What's yeah. your favorite story from each of them? So <clears throat> with Dolph, I would have to say when I, my first week in Memphis, my first week in Memphis, I went to an event. I met his DJ, DJ Rocksteady, who ended up becoming my manager. Yeah. Um, and man, Rocksteady took me to this club. I can't remember the name of it, but it was in um it was in South Memphis. Dolph was headlining this uh or it was like a walkthrough, it wasn't headlining like a festival, but it was yeah. a, it was a walkthrough and he was gonna perform. And uh man, he just they just brought me in, he just showed me so much love, bro, and it was so unexpected. I was like, I've been around big artists before, so I was like you know, I didn't think, I just didn't, I didn't expect anything, you know what I mean? But I, I know how it is when you're in your element. And I'm thinking he's going to have his shades on, he's going to be in the zone, whatever. As soon as they brought, as soon as Rocksteady walked me up, man, he reached out, shook my hand, you know what I mean? It was like, yo, you good, like, you know what I mean? Chill, drink, whatever. Like, they got drinks and everything. He's like, you good. And I remember just sitting back and watching them perform and the lights was going crazy. Like, they loved that man yeah. in Memphis, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it was just, it was crazy. And that was my first week there. So I was still in college. Like I'm, yeah. I'm a, I I got to go back to class the next day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was just yeah. like, I was just in awe, you know what I mean? And um, so that's probably one of my favorite experiences with him. And then with Gotti, I think my favorite experience with him was uh, the session for Down in the DM, man. It was so funny, dude. Like we were in New York and we, a lot of these songs just come from conversation. Okay. And, um, you know, so... At the time, like it was popular to say, uh, like down in the DM, like on Twitter, yeah, yeah, yeah. and oh, I'm sliding in the DMs, yeah. And so, like, he was just asking me, he's like, Man, you ain't got nobody you know, in your DM, so I'm <laughs> showing him, like, I pull up my Snapchat, I'm showing him my Twitter, I'm showing him Instagram, like, you know, we just having a ball just yeah. talking about the DMs, and um, for that song to come from that moment. I'm just like, yo, that moment is crazy. Like, I was there during the conversation that led up to him recording it that night, and um. It's just epic, bro. It's epic. It was so, it was such a good night, man. It was dope. That's fucking cool, man. Especially yeah. when you can have people that you like really look up to be like your peers. Yeah. And here's the thing like, 
anyone who I like to use the term cool guying it. I'm sure you know what that means, yeah, right? Yeah, when somebody yeah. cool guys you. Yeah. I used to think that successful people did that shit all the time. Mm. And then I found out that that's not true. Yeah. And partially because if they did that shit, they wouldn't be successful. Yeah. Because it really does take a village of people. Like being in a crew with mm-hmm. people, and mm-hmm. it's not exclusively like a rap crew, but like in general, your network of people that are around you yeah. have a huge, like, fa- play a huge factor in how successful you can potentially be. Mm-hmm. It is a lot about who you know. Yeah. But people aren't going to put somebody on. Unless they like being around them. And no matter how big somebody is, Mm. there are people bigger than them that need to put them on. Right? So they need to be nice people. That's like my best advice to like anybody is be fucking cool to everybody because you don't know you never know yeah you don't and it, and even if it never came back to you it doesn't matter it's mm-hmm. just nicer to smile anyways mm-hmm. but like you don't know how big of a role that person could potentially ha- have in mm-hmm. your life you don't know where they're going to be a year from now yeah. or two years from now or whatever they could become your best friend and you yeah. just like close that opportunity by being a douchebag because you thought you were cooler than that yeah absolutely. don't cool guy people, yeah don't man. Cool, no yeah I, I definitely i'm i listen just to piggyback i'm the same way like when i go out i don't know like even if people know who i am i always make sure i introduce myself like there could be somebody a, a fan or somebody at a show and they want to come speak to me i'll be like yo what's up i'm wave you know what i mean like you all just just the small stuff you know what i mean like yeah. you never cool guy people man yeah because it's, it's just lame dude you know? i agree so if you could pick any artist at all to make an album with, or let's we'll say a six song, like a little EP. Yeah, yeah, EP. You can do. You're gonna do an EP with this uh, artist, yeah. and you're gonna go on a 90 day international tour. Meaning <sighs> you got to spend a lot of time one on one with this person as yeah. well. Who's it gonna be with? That's. It's, I want to say it's easy, but there's so many people I could pick. I'm gonna give you two. I'm gonna say uh, one J Cole. I would love to just lock in with J Cole. He's such a good. He's like he's such a good rapper, bro. Yeah. Like he's probably the best just pure rapper yeah. right now. And then he's also seems like a very down to earth person. So he'd probably be really easy to work with, lock in, the music's gonna be dope, and then tour would be just crazy. Yeah. And his fan base is is dope as well. Um they all really appreciate the music. And then the second I would probably say Drake. Sure. Drake is another per he's somebody that I've met before. I've seen like multiple tour dates. Uh like the nothing was the same tour. I went to like maybe four dates and I was just like, yo, like these guys, they have fun, bro. Like they, they just have fun. They have yeah. a good time. They're going to pop bottles. They're going to, it's going to be the best music. All the, the, you know, the songs are going to ring off. And then he's also another one who is like top tier, like when it comes to rapping, songwriting, just making hits. So dude, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got to be the most successful one from the last decade yeah. that I can think of. Yeah. Like nobody, nobody's really bigger. Yeah. What are some hacks that you've learned from mm. this career path that have helped you as an example, right? <laughs> like I have learned if I want to get a hold of somebody, mm-hmm. send a DM. Sure. But then you find any other profile that they have mm-hmm. and you hit them there and yep. then you find their management's info and yeah. you hit them there. Yep. That's how you can get a hold of almost anybody yep. if you try that's yep. one of the little like tricks that i've learned what are yeah. some tricks that you've learned that are helpful as far as like the music career goes is yeah. it reaching out to the venue saying hey i know this artist is coming through i want to open yeah you know what i mean like what do you got so i got three for you i would say one there's a mentality that i embrace that makes it so easy it's called um high hopes no expectations high hopes zero expectations this way um you go into a situation um you have these things that you hope to make happen. And um, that way, at the very height, you may, you can make something really, really great happen. But if things don't happen for you, uh, you don't leave with any type of disappointment or discouragement because you didn't have expectations. You didn't expect it to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just a mentality that protects the, uh, the psyche. I feel like with that mentality, you're still able to stay resilient. Um, and you could try so many things. If this doesn't work, you have the resiliency uh, in the capacity to go try something else. You know, I see a lot of times artists try to do things and when it doesn't happen for them, they get so discouraged yeah. or they get so low that it could drive you to, you know, either quit or like, you know, just walk away from it. And um, so I think that mentality is very strong. High hopes, zero expectations. Uh, the second thing I would say is similar to what you were alluding to is just be social. Um, being social on social media is so powerful, man. A lot of times, again, it goes back to the cool guy mentality. 
you know, people uh, are they're worried about their follower count. They're worried about uh, not DMing somebody because it's weird or whatever. Like, scrap that. Every if you're trying to make something happen, DM this person. Uh, leave. Don't feel afraid to leave comments. Um, you know, uh, interact with people um, because a lot of great things happen from being social on social media, like uh, us sitting here yeah, today. Totally. You know what I mean? Uh, we we connected through social media. So I try to tell all up and coming artists to be social be available too you know what i mean like i don't know for if it's personal reasons that why your page is private then keep it private but if you're an artist and you're trying to get your artistry out there you know be, you want to be available you want to be on all platforms you know what i'm saying so um there's that and then um man is there do i have any other hacks i think that would be it man that's like the key to my whole thing is being social a lot of these shows that i've gotten i've just met people right you know i walk into a room and i speak and i uh introduce myself and i make it be known that this is what i do and then um again just the mentality bro yeah. just not being discouraged by anything if i don't get this show i'll get the next one if this song doesn't you know go out the park i'll get it on the next one you know yeah. what i mean well success like it comes and goes and in general like it's like the stock market right yeah like you're it doesn't continuously go up yeah you're gonna have peaks and valleys all the time like mm -hmm. ideally the valleys become less and less low yeah. over time but in yeah. general like you're gonna have things pop and when people have the expectation of like well i was I, this thing worked out this well for me mm -hmm. therefore everything else needs to go that good mm -hmm. or it's a failure mm -hmm. like you're really gonna get down upon yourself yeah. like just try to keep things in perspective and look at like a large like a longer time frame right go yeah. like where was i a year ago what were my goals versus right now not yeah. like a month before this project dropped yeah, yeah. but like a, a period of time and see where that progression came from and then remember it's not exclusively about streams or anything else right right there are so many different things that are involved and as far as like social media goes because people have asked me too like how do you grow a social media account dude like the biggest thing i try to explain to people like if you go to a party mm -hmm. who's the coolest person there yeah. not the person who's dressed the coolest sitting in the corner not looking at people right? Right, right so if you just think like you can look cool and people will like you yeah. no you'll be standoffish the yeah. person who's the coolest at the party is the person who's having the most fun the most with fun. everybody yeah, yeah. right and not cool guy anybody yeah. so if you are trying to build something say like you're a music artist or whatever mm -hmm. interact with other people's accounts and yep. fans and be genuine about it yep. like don't don't sit there and act like you can't follow anybody yeah or you can't yeah. reach out to them first because then you're thirsty yeah dude Dude, like there's that's a difference between being thirsty and hungry yeah it's you know all what I mean? smoking it's all, dude that's a bar right there there's a difference <laughs> between thirsty and hungry that's a fact and it's all smoke and mirrors man like none of that stuff really matters dude like your follower count man follow all if you gotta follow if you want to follow a million people man follow as many people as you want to uh because whatever the goal is that's the main goal it's not right. how cool you look it's not any of those things when you're trying to make it happen you just got to make it happen and then um just to piggyback off the being discouraged it's like as an artist or in any space where you're trying to make it happen yourself, you're going to have these moments where there's there. Sometimes there's nothing going on. It could be a week where you don't have a podcast or I don't have a show or I don't have any motion going on. And then the next week you could, you know what I mean? It could, it could happen yeah. for you. Like you could be the biggest thing in the world. So it's just, um, man, staying with that positive mentality. You know what I mean? Thank you for putting out so much damn music, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's the thing. People get discouraged if they don't have a song pop right away. Yeah. But the problem is if you have a song pop right away and you don't have a catalog, yeah. you're not ready for that success anyways. And you're going to blow your opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. putting in that hustle and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. Yeah. Now, when you have a show, you don't have to play the same eight songs for everybody you yeah. can hit them with new stuff all the time because you have a huge catalog like yep. it keeps it actually interesting yeah man the catalog is like the menu bro when you go to a new restaurant you want to have options to choose from you know what yeah. i mean and so for the people that always come to your restaurant they have what they like and then the people that are new to your restaurant they're like oh my god he's got fried chicken and rice and all this oh he's got everything oh my god <laughs> yeah dude well and so i think a lot of people try to hang on to their like art for way too long and I get like curating the best album in the world you know like uh yeah. Michael like getting winning all those awards and stuff the Grammys this year yeah I get it but the problem is is you're going to spend so much time time trying to perfect this thing yeah. and it's never going to be as good as you want it and you're going to be holding yourself back yeah. the thing is if you make 
50 songs, like you made 52 songs in a year at one point, right? Mm -hmm. If you make those 52 songs, you're going to be progressing so much faster as an artist throughout that time frame that even if you're not happy with any of those 52, yeah. the next one you make is going to be, it's going to take a tenth as much time yeah. and it's going to be 10 times better than that song you otherwise would have spent six months on yep. because of all that experience that you gained during that time frame. Yeah. And if you're not super proud of all that work two years from now, just delete it. Yeah. It doesn't have you to be there forever. Me, you feel me? And you grow, like you get better over time. Exactly. So I would say just to that point, all the artists that are listening, let it fly, bro. Let it fly. All the catalog you stacking up. I got 400 songs. Let it fly, man. You know what I mean? Because what's the worst that could happen, bro? People are just going to be like, oh, my God, this is awesome. Or if you don't like it later down the line, again, delete it dude the worst that can happen is no one will listen to it but guess what no one's listening to it now exactly because it's not out exactly. so <laughs> yeah all right you ready for a rapid fire hey let's get it let's get it. i'll start off something super easy <laughs> what's your favorite girl scout cookie Ooh, the the peanut butter joint what's the the red box the, the one that's like dipped yeah it's chocolate but on the inside is peanut butter i forget the name but you y'all know the red box the red <laughs> box what's yeah. your favorite shoe like you have any shoe what's it gonna be <sighs> Ooh, that's crazy. I'm going to say, I'm going to go to the, the Yeezy Nike 2, the gray joint with the green bottom. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. And, Yeezys yeah. are sick and they don't crease. Nah, not at all. <laughs> They're actually crazy comfortable. Yeah. Like that dude figured, he figured it out. For sure. What's your favorite cartoon as a kid? My favorite cartoon as a kid. Oof. You asking good questions, bro. I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Rugrats. Are you excited to be able to watch that with your son as he gets absolutely, older? Absolutely, absolutely. I ain't gonna lie though. We gonna watch Star Wars. We watching a lot of Star Wars, but I'm definitely gonna show him all the classic cartoons too. For sure. If you and your son are gonna dress up as two characters from Star Wars for Halloween, which ones are they gonna be? Oh, it's there's a couple. I like I like Mandalorian and Grogu. I like Man the Mandalorian and Grogu. Or we could do we could do Darth Vader and Luke too. Sure, you gotta cut off his hand then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Put the glove on him. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most irrational fear? <sighs> oh, you know this is so funny because my name is Wave, but my my most irrational fear is being in the middle of the ocean, like like taking a boat all the way, like like cruises and all of that. No, I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm good. <laughs> Dude, on, I'm good on it. I was always afraid of deep water. I went through this time frame in my life when I was 27, where I'm like, I'm gonna conquer all my fears, and no. one of them was deep water. Not yeah. gonna lie, from the movie Godzilla, when I was a tiny <laughs> kid, seeing that thing come out of the water freaked me out my whole life. Yeah. And then I became a scuba diver. Yeah. That's crazy. Yo, yeah. That's dude. crazy. I was just diving, and we saw eight sharks, eight uh, white tip sharks that were like six feet long. When I was in Costa Rica, like yeah. three weeks ago, we were swimming with those. That's things. dope. It's like, yo, if you fall in the water and you can't swim, it's just a wrap. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, oh man. What really grinds my gears? Um, I would say talking, okay, this might be irrational too, but when I'm in the car and a really dope song comes on or if I'm playing a really good, I hate when people talk over music. I cannot stand it. I hate it. Like it boil, it like my blood be boiling because it'd be like it'll be a lyric too that's about to come on that I really just want to rap really loud and people are some might will be telling you you know just going and going yeah. and going like yo if you ever around me and I'm I'm hearing some good music some Drake or some Kanye is on please just. Or, dude, if you're showing your music to somebody and they're yeah. talking and they're not listening to the thing you just yeah. put work into, it's yeah. crazy rude. Don't yeah. be an asshole. Yeah, Listen no, to the don't song. Don't talk over the music. <laughs> no. What is the most underrated city that you performed in? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. Most underrated city. So not the biggest city. The most underrated. It's definitely... I'm going to say Mississippi. Or no, Alabama. I was at, oh, I, I, yeah, I performed in Alabama. There was a shoe store. I doubt it's there anymore, but there was a shoe store and uh, called Kicks with a Z. Yeah. And um, bro, they were, it was fire. And you know, <laughs> the, the type of music that I do, like I'm not doing, yeah. I'm not, I'm in there rapping. Like I'm yeah. getting bars off and they was, it was lit. Like, Dude, how wild is it to like have people in cities you've never been to know the lyrics to your songs? Yeah, it's crazy, bro. I'm like, yo, y'all rocking with Wave in Alabama? That's crazy. Damn, Shout out Alabama, dude. man. Yeah. What is, <laughs> what's the best style trend that's happening right now? The best style trend. <laughs> um, Man, there's a lot of weird style trends. Okay, so what's the worst one? 
The worst one is the. I'm saying those red boots I'm, suck, dude. Yeah, I hate the, those things. The big, the, yeah, the big misfit, misfit boots. I'm going to say, okay, I have a love and hate relationship with the shiesty mask. It's the ski mask that all everybody's wearing. It's like, yo, sometimes I get it for fashion. I get it. But then on the flip side, it's like, yo, everybody looks like a bank robber. <laughs> I'm not going to hold you. Like, yeah. if I'm walking down the street, you got the fire fit on. You got these lime green Jordans on. But you got this, you got a ski mask on, bro. Like, I don't know if I want to compliment you or like cross the street one time. You know what I mean? Like, it's just suspect. Ah, uh, yeah, I agree. But as somebody who has rocked the shiesty myself, I cannot judge. So you know, I, it's a love <laughs> and hate relationship with the shiesty mask. And then I would also say big, big, big wide pants. Yeah. I'm just not a big fan of. Like, I understand straight leg. I understand even baggy. But like, people kind of getting crazy with the with the baggy jeans, like the the back of the the pant leg be scrubbing the ground yeah. it just looks uncomfortable you know what i mean like yeah, yeah i'm not I don't, I'm, I don't like the really tiny shirts that i've been seeing dudes wear yo. i don't know what's up with the like midriff showing shirts yo. i'm not i'm not a fan what's the last article of clothing shoes could be it too yeah last article of clothing you got you were super excited about yo listen okay this jacket this and my red carhartt jacket rare carhartt is very hard to find the Detroit jacket is very hard to find. Anything from the 80s is extremely hard to find. I'm, I'm on a Reddit. I like, I'm a part of the <laughs> Reddit community, and yeah. we literally dig and look and search for very rare Carhartt. This right here, this one right here, you're not going to find it. This is like, it's not even denim. It looks denim, oh, but it's sick. not denim. This is from like 89, and it's a Detroit-style jacket, Carhartt. Hello, holla at me. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. What's the best thing about Milwaukee that people don't know about? Um, man, that's a tough question because there's so many things like Milwaukee in general is just the, this big diamond in the rough hidden behind the shadow of Chicago. But um, I think the art, honestly, just like the music, the culture. There we go. I would say our culture. So the music that's coming out of Milwaukee, uh, the way we talk, the food, um, just everything, just the culture in general is probably the best thing from Milwaukee that um, – you know, people don't really know. People are starting to figure it out because of TikTok and all of that. Yeah. But um, you really got to come here and experience it, man. It's, it's really dope. Dude, I think it's the, the combination of the Midwest nice while it's still a big city. Yeah. Like, you don't get that in other places, dude. Facts. But Facts. you get that here. Yeah. So you're on tour and you have to stop at a gas station. Mm -hmm. Which one is it going to be and why? Oh, we go on a quick trip. Hell yeah, we're going on a quick <laughs> we're going trip. To, we're going on a quick trip. You know what I mean? They got they got everything you need. You get you need a good donut. They got good donuts. They're warm food. Like I ain't gonna lie. Like I've been to a lot of gas stations. Not all the warm food be hitting. Most you know what I mean? It sucks. Yeah, but when you go to quick trip, you know what I mean? They be having it. They be having it nice, nice and uh, what do you call the little the taquieros or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them joints be hitting. Uh, Did you see the fried chicken thing they were doing right now? Yeah, I saw that. Dude, saw that. oh my God. Whoever wins fried chicken for life, yeah. I'm super jealous of. Yeah. That shit's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, Quick Trip is uh, is crushing it. Okay, yeah. so what's next with you? Are you working on an album? Are you really focusing on like <clears throat> short form content right yeah. now? Are you focused on shows? Like, What are the things you're currently working on? So it's a gumbo of both. So far as musically, um, I'm getting ready to go on another run of just dropping singles, singles, singles. Um, I call this the um, Get the Pot Hot. Oh, sure. um, segment of the year for me. Yeah. Um, so I'm just heating it up. I'm going to drop a flurry of singles until like the end of the end of the year. Simultaneously, while I'm doing that, I'm putting together a concise project. I don't want to call it an album because I don't know how many songs will end up on it. Yeah. But um, it's basically an album that's uh, me telling my story in full on what it's like to grow up on the north side of Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, and um, it's, it's also going to be accompanied by a documentary shot by my man uh, Clark Slater. You know what I mean? Out of yeah. New York. Shout out my man. Um, so we just we putting it all together. Uh, so that's what I'm working on musically. I got a ton of shows coming up. I'm definitely doing uh, Save the Turf uh, this summer. I'm going to try to land a slot on Summerfest as well. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and I'm also doing a podcast with my boy Kyle. It's called uh, The Show on River West Radio, which we also film in this studio. Shout out to River West Radio. Um, it's dope. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's really, really dope. And uh, yeah, bro, just, oh, also the content. You mentioned the short form content. Yeah. So with the songs, I'm going to accompany each single with at least three pieces of um, like short form content. Yeah. It's going to be really, really dope, though. It's not going to be like uh, the phone setup situation. I'm going to, it's almost going to um, act as a music video, yeah. but just three different versions of a music video to one song. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, dude, yeah. that's the move. You have to put the energy into that. What yeah. is your strategy like with each individual song? Mm -hmm. If somebody is trying to put out a single now that you know a lot about it, yeah. what would you recommend? How would you say a, the strategy should be for one song to come out? And I'm including the marketing and the social yeah. media side. hundred percent. I would, um, man, there's a, there's a, there's a flurry of things. I just feel like once you have a single and you, once you got a single and you put it out, you got to surround that with so much content. You know what I mean? So go hit radio if you can go uh go do a podcast so you want to load up on your podcast you want to do some diy content at the house whether you're breaking the song down showing how the song was created um that type of stuff and then of course find a beautiful backdrop somewhere set your phone up and just do you performing you know what i mean do performance content as well so you want those three styles of content to go along with the single and it just gives it more life you know what i mean yeah i yeah. think you it's the problem is is unless somebody hears it one time and it just like blows their mind the first time which yeah. the truth is a lot of songs that people love didn't blow their mind the first time they heard it nah. they needed to hear it several times right yeah. so you need to be able to get your song your whole branding everything in front of these people Absolutely. multiple times yep. and you have to give them more opportunities you can't expect people to see something that you post song or whatever yeah. you can't even if it's great you can't expect people to just see it yeah you absolutely. need to hammer that marketing ground and make sure that people saw it even if you think like oh now somebody had to see it 10 times and maybe i'm just like overloading it yeah no they're probably not seeing it all 10 times yeah you need to put in way more than you think you do for absolutely this thing to work. yeah you can't be scared to continue to to run it like it's old to you Right. You know, you drop a single that might be old to you, but to each person that you come across, it's brand new. You know what I mean? So you have to keep uh, you got to keep putting it in their face and keep finding creative ways to promote and show this single. You know what I mean? Yeah. All types of content. And then also just getting get out of the house. Word yeah. of mouth is still one of the strongest ways of promo. You know what I mean? So um, that's something you could do too. Well, and you don't know what these individuals, like you go to a show, right? And mm -hmm. then you talk to like fans or somebody afterwards, or even if you're just at an open mic, right? Yeah. And then you talk to other people that are there. Yeah. I know some people have this idea of like, well, I'm trying to hit <laughs> millions of streams. So why does it matter if I talk to these four people? Right. Well, the thing is, is those four people could be putting you on playlists. Mm -hmm. They could be putting you in connection with other people. They could be the reason that 10,000 other people find your thing yeah. because you had a good connection with this one person. It's again, talking about that like core fan base, making yep. sure that you're making personal connections with these people. Mm -hmm. They're the reason that you're going to sell tickets to shows. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. So each one of those opportunities, like you can't undervalue. No, not at all. Not so at all. Towards the end of the show, I always ask the same question because mm -hmm. when you pursue something you're passionate about for a career, you get yeah. to have really unique experiences. They're yeah. not usually money related, but they make everything thing worth it mm. can you share a story of an experience you're really grateful for but it only happened because you pursued music yeah absolutely man um <clears throat> i would say performing at the bucks arena um that looks sick dude yeah yeah i would say that performing at the bucks arena was such a great experience man because i know what it means like again just going back to um representation is key man like growing up in milwaukee uh, as a kid, for me, I've never seen anybody from Milwaukee perform on that floor. They would always have entertainers come in, um, you know, right. just the most famous people come in. I've never, you know, as a kid growing up here, I had never seen that before. And so um, when they reached out to me to not only just to work with me, but also have me perform and essentially just play one versus nobody on the floor, um, I thought that was super, super important moment, you know what I mean? Because now all these kids get to see somebody that's um, homegrown, born and raised in Milwaukee and uh, touch that stage, you know, touch the floor, perform, you know, and I'm there to rap doing my music. And, um, you know, it's just very, very surreal, very inspirational. And then on top of that, my family was there to have my family, my mom, my aunt, my son was there running, uh, you know, just to have him running through the tunnels yeah. and all of that. That's a moment for not just for me, but for my family that we'll never forget. And that moment came because I pursued my passion, which is music. You know what I mean? Damn, dude, that's powerful. I want to go yeah. do that. My buddy TYB actually got to perform on stage there too. Yeah, they were crazy. playing some of his music and stuff because he's tight with DJ Shauna. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. bro, it's, it's, it's such a surreal moment, bro, when you walk out and then you look around. It felt like a movie. I literally yeah. felt like I was in a movie. I started to look around and the crowd is going, yeah, everybody's standing up. It's almost like a, a gladiator walking into the Coliseum and everyone's just going nuts, right? And then as soon as the music's going, now you in it. And um, so, yeah, bro, it's just a very, very epic moment. And then to be able to do it multiple times for me is just like, 
that's crazy. Yeah. You know? How did the connection with them happen? I'm assuming at some point you must have <clears throat> sent an email or or something. Crazy, bro. Not nah, not even. It's it's so funny. Like my whole life, I've been a Bucks supporter, so yeah. I've always even random times when I'm watching the game, I'm just tweeting. I'm at in the Bucks when they win. I'm at the Bucks. Like, yo, great game. Just naturally, because I'm a huge Bucks fan. Yeah. And um, when they started, um, they started a new um marketing department. And they were, you know, they just want to spread the awareness of the team even more. Right. And so um, they said I was the, one of the first people they thought of. You know, they looked on all their social media. They just seen that I tagged them a ton of times. And they were like, then they did their research. They saw who I was, saw that I was uh, performing and all this stuff. So, you know, they just like, yo, we want to work with you however we can, which was through the ambassador program. And even nowadays, I'm more of like a um, like a consultant. Yeah. For the music, I create playlists for them. I oh, help cool. help them pick music to play off of the arena, including my music, which is dope because I get to yeah. plug myself. And um, anytime they need me to pull up and and rock the rock the arena, you know what I mean? They always tap in with me, so it's dope. Yeah, dude. And somebody like Giannis knows who Wave Chappelle is. Yeah, exactly, man. It's, <laughs> it's crazy to think about, man. Dude, but that's a really good example of showing like if you want support from something and even you weren't even necessarily going for that, but like yeah. you need to support them first. Yep. Like if you want somebody else to show you love, you need to show them love first. Yeah. All these people are like, oh, why can't I get people to go to my shows? Go to other people's shows, dude. Yeah. Like yeah. that's the fastest way. You yeah. need to be supporting other people if you expect them to support you. And yep. that's what you're doing at the Bucks, and that's how it paid off. Yeah. Like what you what you want to come in, you ha you have to put out. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, and that's one thing I also want to touch on too is just supporting support people. You know what I mean? It's like you don't have to force it, but it's already hard enough to uh, be artist or just do anything where it's all self-driven. Right. So just find, I encourage all artists just to go find somebody else that you really rock with, you like what they're doing and support it. Not for the sake of getting something back, right. but just supporting it because you know, you really, really enjoy it. And I guarantee when you put that support out and that energy out, it's going to come back tenfold. That, and I would say, even if it's a famous artist, but I, ideally somebody who isn't quite as big, mm -hmm. if you really like what somebody's doing, it's not just music, it's mm -hmm. any other kind of art. Yep. If you just send a genuine heartfelt message to that person telling mm -hmm. them how much their work means to you, mm -hmm. that's going to make their whole goddamn day. Yep. And they may make a, they, a whole song may come to them that day exclusively because of the mood that you put them in. And yep. as artists, we like get down on ourselves so often. It's like a constant battle in our heads of like, am I good enough? I don't know. It's not yeah. working right now. Blah, blah, blah. 100%. Dude, one individual heartfelt message means so much. Yeah. I know it doesn't like affect numbers of streams, but it'll help us create better and it'll keep us encouraged. So please yes. send a message to, to any artist that you appreciate their work and tell them something nice about it. Absolutely. Dude, thank you so much for coming on the show and having man. me. Yeah. This was fucking dope. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Man, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming, man. You know what I mean? Milwaukee's dope. I know Eau Claire is... I've never been, so next time, hopefully next time yeah. I can come out to you. Yeah, dude, I got a guest room. You can come kick it for where? the weekend or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it'll be fun. Um, give everybody a shout out again, like where yeah. they can find you. Yeah. How and <clears throat> big part is what's the best way that they can support you? Is there like a yeah. specific platform? Are there specific actions they can do? Obviously, yeah. like they could buy albums, but yep. how are the best ways people can support your work? Yeah, so definitely make sure you um for for the moment being, you know, what I mean, we still on streamers, so go and stream. Can't stop, won't stop. That's the most current project, you know. I mean that came out i'm on spotify apple music if you want to follow me on instagram real wave Chappelle. the next uh rollout of music will be exclusively on my band camp for a month so i'll definitely give um all the supporters who are proud to pay give you guys a moment to um you know come buy the art directly from me before it gets out to the streamers so definitely be looking out for that um shout out to river west radio one more time man for um hosting us you know what i mean this has been dope and um, you guys could definitely follow them, River West Radio. I do host a podcast on there as well. So tap in the show at River West Radio. Shout out my co-host, Kyle. And um, yeah, man, just just come find a wave. You know what I mean? I have tons of catalog. So if you like what you heard on the podcast, you know what I mean? Go dive into the catalog and just be looking out, man. I got tons of shows coming up and I have tons of more music. 
Hell yeah, dude. You can find Passion Pod literally everywhere yes. on Instagram. But if you Google it, we're on YouTube real heavy now. Mm-hmm. We're on the radio. Mm-hmm. You can find passionpod.org, which is the link in my bio, which you can then find merchandise. You could donate to the show. You can get on the Patreon. There are like a million ways that you can support. And yeah. again, the easiest way is just by like sharing stuff. Yep. Like it doesn't cost you anything. Nothing. Go to my YouTube and just like subscribe and then drop fire emojis and spam <laughs> my page. Like that Absolutely. would still be helpful. There's like a million ways to do it. Yep. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Make sure that you like and subscribe my dude (laughs) thank you for joining us for this episode of the passion pod we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did we'll see you soon